Hi! Thank you very much for joining me again and if you're new to the vlog, very very warm welcome. Um, so we're going through some of my favourite software and uh, today we're going to be looking particularly at the software that I use for Digimodes. So let's have a look at how I do it. First of all, we've already seen in the previous videos uh, these screens. So we know what the PowerSDR software is and we also know what Log4OM is. But what we haven't talked about yet is this software. This is, this is WSJTX. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with FT8 and FT4 along with uh, other Digimodes. Well, this is the software that I use for Digimodes. Now, this isn't meant to be a training course on WSJTX. Uh, neither is it meant to be a sales pitch on the virtues of FT8 and FT4. I just want to show you the software that I use to do this job. So, First of all, WSJTX, in my mind, is really great. It does the job that we want it to do um, from uh, a Digimode perspective. It links perfectly and seamlessly into Log4OM. So this is literally just the logbook part of Log4OM down here. Um, as you can see here, if I just bring up Log4OM, there we go. Um, you'll see I've been on FT8 a, a little bit today and, uh, and it's quite busy actually on 20 meters. So yes, it works perfectly with, uh, with Log4OM on, um, on Digimodes. Down here on the, back on the left screen, down here this is the uh, waterfall so that we know exactly where the slots are that are available for us to use when we're calling CQ. Again, I'm not going to tell you how uh, WSJTX works. That's not what I'm here to do. But what I would like to do is show you this, which I think is really, really quite good. And I'm sure many of you are already familiar with Grid Tracker. Now, what Grid Tracker does is it talks um, to, well, first of all, it talks to the internet. So it talks to sources like um, PSK Reporter. The other thing that it does is it talks to WSJTX and it also talks to Log4OM. So all of this information going backwards and forwards actually does kind of mean something. So if we look back here at the, uh, the Log4OM screen, you'll see that I've had a, a number of QSOs over the, the last five or ten minutes or so. And what you'll also then see is that these QSOs relate on here, depending on uh, the age that I've actually got set in here for these tracks, so you can actually see effectively where your signal's getting to. What it also does is because it tracks grids, it... Um, so I just got uh, distracted by the other screen there. It uh, it also shows you where you've talked to in the world, and also um, who's currently transmitting, who's currently receiving on different bands. So the kind of information that it gives you up here is it will tell you obviously uh, time and how many uh, how many physical calls are active, how many people are actually on, how well you're decoding and how well you're calling. Um, there's there's a fair bit of setup involved. It's not too arduous, but it, it is quite in depth as far as getting all the various different software packages to talk simultaneously. So that's quite involved. But I think for the end result, um, it's actually quite spectacular. To be honest, I think so anyway. So um, there you go. I just wanted to really give you a bit of an insight um, into how I do it and what I do. Obviously, um, using the Flex, the Flex takes care of everything. 
So, you know, it, it's it's connected to my PC, so there's no TNCs or, or data cables and stuff like that. So, as you can see here, all these various different paths are uh, stations. The squares are potentially places that I've spoken to with the information on when and what mode. And then what you'll see here in a second, when I start and transmit, you'll see the dotted red line. So that's the path that it's taking to the station that I'm trying to communicate with. Which is quite interesting because it kind of gives you an idea about uh, the route that the, the radio signal's taking. And as you can see, you can just mouse over on a, a station. You can even click on a station and it will bring up information about that station. And equally, that you can then click on a link and it will take you off to their QRZ page. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, then please feel free. Go ahead and subscribe and you'll also find a little bell down there that you can press and then you'll get notified of any future videos. Okay, guys. Thank you very much for joining me again. Um, it's been great having you with me and uh, look forward to catching you again soon. And in the meantime, stay safe. Seven free for now. Bye bye.